I want to welcome Daniel Lau to Entrepreneur, the podcast for Wizards of Eyes. Daniel, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Good. So uh, Daniel has a really special story. Um, his dad grew up in Hong Kong, and uh, Daniel took over. He learned how to make frames. And what's special t- about Daniel is they're made right here in California. Yes. So Daniel, tell me a little about your upbringing. My dad and his partner. When Bosch and Lum in Rochester, close on the factory, and uh, they went there and bought some of the equipment and uh, had a U-Haul and drive it to California, try to make some frames. Um, what, just, year, what year was this? It was 1990. Wow. Okay. Yeah, like um, at that moment, there wasn't a lot of uh, factory that is around and a lot of uh, closing down. You know, Martin Copeland and um, also like May Optical, they all closing down and. My dad, that he been, uh, he knows how to make injection mold, and uh, he thought like, oh, making eyeglasses in U.S. is kind of cool, and it's probably means something. You know, people like to have things that you know being made domestically. So um, that's how we started the business. Okay. Now, did your dad learn to make eyewear in Hong Kong? Or uh, well, we did actually make like couple injection mold for like eyeglasses, kind of like the Oakley kind of style stuff, and did some like alarm clock and stuff like that. So he did have a little concept on like eyewear. Um, so yeah, you can say that he kind of have a little background for that. And but his partner was actually um, has been doing uh, eyewear his whole life. Okay, who is your dad's partner? Um, his his name is Eddie. He passed away, um, you know, a while back, and my dad just took over the whole business. Um, he had leukemia, and um, it was uh, about twenty years ago. Okay. So fast forward, um, what ha- what uh, at what moment did you move to the USA? Um, I was I was born in Hong Kong and came to US in 1986, and I was 13 years old. And uh, my dad, um, you know, started a business, no employees, just you know, two of them. And uh, being in high school, just after school, and just go help out and learn about eyeglasses. I mean, of course, like, you know, when you're, like, in high school, you know, you, you just, you know, you're not really into working, and, you know, I usually, like, play, like, really loud hip-hop in there, and, like, <laughs> they don't know what the heck I'm doing, but, yeah. but I do read, like, a lot of magazines, and I look at, like, how Madonna wear the glasses, like, so, those stuff, like, the image is kind of stick in my brain, it's like, oh, this is, I remember this, you know, seeing this, and I look at Rolling Stock, the Oval was, like, really popular, you know, and, you know, like, all this stuff is, in a computer in in the brain you know in this library in the brain yeah so at what point did you kind of look into the family business and think you know maybe I want to be a part of this well you know my dad always want me to help out anyway you know he's kind of like a I think he's like an Asian thing you know like you know you help your dad like regardless what happened but when I kind of have to work for a while and you know I just kind of born interest in, into it like you know I I start meeting people and I mean at first we we're just only making for wholesalers like prestige uh, you know like I you know I did some for Dita and did some for like Garrett uh, and you know some like Salima stuff so and you're actually helping other wholesalers uh, design frames and create them tell me about that well they they design their own frames and they tell me what they're looking for and stuff like that but in that process actually I learned a lot throughout like you know how to make a better frames in design wise what sells better and you know like um, you know just kind of uh, uh, both ways you know we, we learn from each other okay cool um, so tell me about the Calib brand you know really what is it what's the vibe materials craftsmanship at first, when we tried to come up with like a name, you know, because like we were just only making a wholesaler in the past, um, you know, we say, you know what, maybe we should come up with a brand. We know so much about eyewear, you know, to making it, and uh, but you know, we need to start. We need a starting point. Um, so the initial first style that we did was a very thin acetate round ones in like three sizes, a perfect round. The the one that kind of like George Burns is wearing and. Um, you know uh, John Lennon you know that kind of look and we did three sizes Uh and from there like uh, we just want to concentrate we say like you know what we want to make a collection out of like a lot of round frames I know that right now is really popular but we've been doing that for like 30 years already 
we want those round lovers to have like a lot of different profile that they can choose from like a thick one thin one metal whatever you like to do you know like you can just choose from there so um, that's how we we come up with a, you know the name color main California color in Greek means very good stuff and um, you know that's how we come up with that okay so tell me about the actual craftsmanship and uh, manufacturing process that goes on in California um, I understand you know things like your metals come from Japan um, how about your acetate well our acetate is a uh, hundred percent being made in California now again like the material the raw material is from Mazzucchelli and Tecuron so those are import but those are just like raw material there's no domestic raw material vendors anymore the last one closed down like I think 1994 tectonic uh, which got bought out by uh, Mazzucchelli okay so what is raw material raw material is a sheet acetate like you know they come in strip or uh, extruded which means like the bigger sheets the bigger sheets how long is that uh, I would say like um, the, 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 the strip the strip the, of the acid. strip type uh, it's about like maybe uh, six foot long wow. uh, yeah like uh, uh, like maybe like 18 inches wide and then the big sheets is like probably uh, four by six foot okay so after you know you import these in from you know Mazzucchelli what's the next step in crafting well we cut it to the size that you know that we want for that um, the size on the frame for the frame front and we panel graph it out now I know a lot of like there's a few other uh, factory in US right now they use CNC and stuff like that but we still panel graphing what is panel graphing panel graphing means that uh, you use a drill bed like you know you hold the sheet of plastic that you cut in that certain size and cut it the interior and exterior out and cut all the angles out and um, you know you do you know do a nose bomb and you know all that kind of stuff and it's a very traditional way to do it I don't even think China is doing that anymore so sometimes I tell my customer you know it's limited you know you only can mix so much with hands it's really really handmade yeah Daniel I understand your frames are you know good quality you're really putting your love into them they're handmade what makes a good quality frame I say polish is always number one you know the polish it has to be shine you know like the gloss that really tells like the final product how it look like and uh, but when I was learning from my dad you know you always hold the frame front with the side is make sure that it's flush for like acetate frames of course like the full point adjustment and all that kind of stuff but sometimes design can make like different like you know if you don't have nose bump the, the, the front can be more flat uh, but again like the way we look at it is like we want to make sure that when you put the prescription in there it's gonna be like you know uh, 95 degree like when you open it up not like you know like all the way out there you know I mean yeah yeah you got to make sure stuff like that you, you cannot just think in the beginning you gotta think like the whole thing like like right after you you finish the product and the end consumer get the product like how they feel about it you know okay sure definitely so what goes actually into a polish? Um, I know personally in my optical, you know, sometimes I have someone comes in with a little puppy mark and I just put it on the little buffing wheel with some rouge, the same rouge I polish a lens with, with this, and that's not the right polishing process. So what actually goes into polishing a frame? Well, polishing, um, you know, when when the frame coming out from the barrel, like we use like four steps, you know, like coarse, medium fine, and like extra fine to clean up the, you know, the wax. But uh, when you do the polishing, there's like a few ways to do it. Like um, uh, in Japan, like they sometimes they use like the wet type of uh, wheels to polish it, and then you know they do the dry one. But what we do, we do two like two types, like the coarse and fine, like the the brown and uh, the purple wax that we do. Okay. Um, yeah, if you're good at it, you can finish a frame. Eh, I would say like about three to four minutes. Are they hand polished, or are they like in some type of vat, you know, rolling and? It's almost like a shoe polisher, like a big, big wheels. Um, you know, like, you know how, I don't know if you've ever, anybody seen like a shoe polish, you know, like it's a really big wheels. Uh -huh. When you have a smaller one, it's just not a big area to, you know, to, 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 to play around with. So, um, yeah, like uh, it's really big one. It's almost like 10 inches wheel. Okay. Um, you know, tell me about your design process. Are, are you still coming up with new shapes? and colors or do you kind of stick to your core collections uh no we're open for anything new like you know like uh we we don't limit ourselves to anything that's why you see like we have like frames that made in 
Japan for the metal part of it because um, you know we want to stick with what is going on in the industry like we don't want to be behind so uh, but our design we always kind of like uh, inspired by some of the older uh, frames that is being made uh, we do have our own collection too like you know like that we came out with our own uh, but sometimes we kind of, you know, uh, change a little bit, like, you know, the, DB, the DBL, like, you know, on the bridge area, or, you know, make it bigger, make it wider. Uh, but again, like, the core part of it is round. Like, you know, we want to have a lot of choice for that. Okay. Um, tell me about why being made in the USA is important to you. Um, I think we're really going through a revolution right now in the retail area. Um, people are not so fond of foreign goods, and so bringing... Uh, eyewear manufacturing back to the U.S. is a, a common thing that we're all focused on. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I think being a factory in U.S., especially like panographing, that, you know, I I could definitely make a lot of it. I can make thousands of it, but I don't have to. And the beauty of it is, like, you know, if you be able to control it, that uh, you can make small quantities, see if it works or not. If it's not, then you can move on. You won't get stuck with, like, a thousand pair of frames around. And um, I, I think, like, uh, you know, that's the advantage of being a factory, right? Like, you know, you can make smaller batches. Uh, but, you know, also the consumer like that. You know, like, oh, you know, we want to support local. You know, we want to uh, buy stuff that being made here. And I, I really feel like right after September 11, like, everybody is really want more stuff being made in U.S. Um, but I, I remember again, too, like, when I was, you know, carrying a small collection and bringing to some of the doctor locally, um, there was a moment that they don't really care though, you know, like before, I, I say yeah, before September 11, like be, before 2000, they said, Daniel, I really like you, your style is cool, you know, but <laughs> I can't buy from you, I can get those for like five bucks, yeah, you know, yeah. and I, I guess I, it makes sense and I understand, so I, I guess from there I learned to be like, uh, you know, I, I, if I need to change like style or whatever, I will change with it, I, I it's just not a limit for me, like, you know, like I had, yeah. Yeah. Where do you, where do you gain your inspiration from? Uh, you know, I I go to opticians and I ask them. I actually I'm a good listener for that part of it, and um, I ask them, you know, what works these days. You know, like um, what do you think that is missing in the industry? I I I listen to them a lot. Like I don't just make it because I have this big ego. Like oh, okay, whatever I make, everybody's gonna love it. I, I think there's few people in the, in the industry they do that, but. But not us, like we, we do listen to our retail a lot more because they talk to the consumer more, they know about fitting more, so. How many, yeah, that's great. How many people are working alongside you to you know make your manufacturing process go smooth? Uh, we have like uh, six people working for us right now, not including me and my brother. My brother is like, you know, with my partner in the business. And uh, yeah, six people, yeah, yeah. Like they, they do like different, they do different department. They Sometimes they do polish. Sometimes they do panographing and uh, sometimes they shoot the coal wire. Um, yeah, you know. Okay. And do you ever make any bespoke pieces custom for anybody? Or uh, we we actually did. I, I think we did some for NASA back in the days. Like you know, like a couple pieces. Like they have this special lens that they will try to launch. We did like a few of those prototype, uh, but we try to stay away with that kind of business because you know it, it doesn't make sense. Like you think about like California wages. Like you know, if I spend a week, even yeah. though I like. 100 bucks a day is like 600 bucks like yeah how, what can you charge people for that yeah, 600 definitely. bucks you yeah know? definitely you know do, do you think you have any skill sets opticians um need to learn you know what how can they stay competitive in today's environment yeah um you know what else i want to say is um that um how this digital age right now with the internet selling and stuff like that um i think that needs to be more open mind like you know like how i said that you know like I'm not limited to whatever I do because um, you cannot fight a big trend um, the big trend is already there you just know how to adapt to it like so um, sometimes when I hear like some people say oh you know like if they sell online you know I won't carry it I don't think so I think as long as you have the margin it's tougher right now but you know it, it doesn't mean that you know you just close the door um, you know especially what happened right now you know um, it will just be faster and faster yeah. Like with technology, you know? Yeah. I mean, if it's 3D printing, like you can do 3D scanner, you scan a frame, you make another frame right away. You know, you have to know all this stuff, you know? So. Yeah, no, I totally agree. We, we all have to be open and 
um, things are going online, and that's a good thing because online allows, especially small companies like yours, to have good publicity. So it used to be, and still today, you know, if you want to get noticed, you either have to go to a trade show or buy an ad in a publication. Right. Uh, but the internet allows us to do things on such a more economical manner. Exactly. Yeah, you, and you can see more, and uh, you know, you know what people are doing, and you know, the the world just closer right now. You know, it's not as big like you know as before, and. And I understand the traditional optician that the old school one like really you know can take that, but you know you gotta have open mind. Like if you're in business, you just have to have open mind. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree at that. You know, I was just listening to um, another podcast, and it was about how you know 20 years ago, um, you know, if you were introverted, well, that means you would stay in your house all the time. But today, with the internet and Facebook groups, you're able to connect with like-minded people, right? And that allows us to, you know, have fabulous meetups like this exactly. because, you know, most of these people here, we might have had a relationship online, yeah. But now we actually get to come meet each other, and that's the whole fun part about it. Yeah, maybe we should open like get a new page or a new uh, uh, forum in Facebook called Optical Gossip. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, who was what, someone got bought out? You know, yeah, whatever. yeah. <laughs> well, I saw there's uh, someone was posting about um, getting one for like optical dating. <laughs> I was like, oh god. Yeah, that's a little bit too much. Yeah, that was too much. <laughs> yeah, too yeah, much. you gotta go match.com for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks so much, Daniel. Um, thanks for being here at the Iowa After Party. Thank you. And um, keep doing cool stuff with your localized production. I try my best. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>